Members of the Senate, this is your five minute call. Session will begin in five minutes.
Will all unauthorized people please leave the Senate chamber? The Senate will come to order. The chair recognizes Pastor Jerry Deck from Zionsville Presbyterian Church to lead the Senate invocation. Pastor Deck. Let's pray. God, we gather this afternoon with the promise of a warming sun just around the bend. And that promise, though not yet a reality, keeps us encouraged and hopeful in the present. It is a reminder that hope is not about what is, but what can be. Not about what we can see, but what we may one day see. And it is the hope that keeps us out of the muck of cynicism and out of the den of despair. And to be sure, it is easier for us oftentimes to decline into despondency than it is to engage in the hard work of believing in a better tomorrow. We hear the cries of a father and husband in Zionsville and countless mothers in Indianapolis and beyond, and we are reminded that all of us are vulnerable. None of us safe from the vagaries of our world. We wonder where is the peace. We experience the anger, pain, and fear on the issues of the day, and we see a community that seems destined to be forever splintered, and we wonder where is the unity. We see the same struggle of poverty, hunger, and hatred day after day, and year after year, and we wonder where is the hope. And yet, God, we know that with you nothing is impossible, and so we see glimpses of this when we listen rather than shout over one another, when we seek forgiveness rather than vengeance, and when we put the needs of others over ourselves. And so on this day, give each man and woman here the strength to believe that peace, unity, and hope are not merely concepts for the naive, but goals to be worked toward. We pray that each person here would be reminded that they are stewards of this state for this time, and that this reminder might give them the energy to keep listening, hoping, sacrificing, that we might grow into a community that is not content with despair, but eager to grow closer to you and one another. We thank you for their service, God, and we look forward to when peace, unity, and hope prevail. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Senator Delph will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will our guests in the gallery please rise and join us? Senator Delph. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll now take the roll of senators. All senators, please indicate your presence by voting present. When the machine is open, the machine is now open. Senators Holdman, Buck, Walker, Pete Miller, Merritt, Brown, Bray, Talion, Arnold. Senator Walker. Pete Miller, Italian.
Senator Talion. He's got. Machine is closed. Clerk will tally the roll. The roll call shows 50 senators present. The chair declares a quorum and the Senate is ready for business. Senator Cruz. Senator Cruz is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Madam um, President and members of the Senate. Today I'd like to. Uh, pay attention for us. We have quite a few uh, pages here today and others who've come down and they are here representing the Indiana Youth Services Association on the I Vote to Today um, Day is here at the State House. These young people are here to learn about Indiana government, how it works, how it functions, and this is a great day for each one of them to learn our process uh, better than they've uh, maybe been able to expose to back in their home area and they've had thousands of people participate in this over the last several years and so we have a large group here today they had a session downstairs in the north atrium and had different people speak to them downstairs and I think that it's good for us as senators to thank them and appreciate their participation in the government process here today so I'd like to uh, have each one of you uh, pay recognition to them, so thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Cruz, and could we give, just share our recognition for them being here today, if you would, thank you. And Senator Long is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Madam President. Members of the Senate, if I can have your attention, please. We have an honored guest here with us today, Congressman Luke Messer who uh, an old friend and colleague who uh, is uh, back from Washington temporarily and has uh, agreed to uh, talk with us just for a few moments. Uh, we're honored to have you here, Luke. Uh, we're proud of the work you're doing out in Washington right now and uh, excited for your ascension within the ranks of the Republican caucus. So at this moment, uh, Madam President, if we could place the Senate in recess and we can hear from our honored guest. The Senate will stand in recess. Congressman Messer, welcome. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Senator. It's great to be here. Some of you may remember, you know, I am a, uh, from the other side of the building, an alumnus uh, from the time of, of service here in the Indiana General Assembly. It's hard to believe, but it's been 10 years ago since I retired from over there. I was thinking as I spoke this morning, uh, my two-year-old and one-year-old that were sticking their head through the rails over there 10 years ago are now... 12 and 11. We've added an eight-year-old now son. They're all doing great. They're Hoosiers, so they're very focused on uh, on basketball and, and their seventh grade, fifth grade, and third grade championships. I'll tell you all quickly kind of my favorite story from these basketball championships. A couple years ago, my fifth grade daughter, who was uh, in her first year of playing basketball, uh, didn't score very many points through the year, played a little bit of defense, got to the championship game, absolute true story. She scored the first five points in the championship game. And after her second bucket, she was beaming, smiling as she ran down the, the court. And I wanted to jump up as her father and say, hey kid, act like you've been there. Everybody's gonna know you've never scored two buckets in one game. And, uh, that girl, that little girl who scored five points last week scored 20 in, in her seventh grade um, game and the kids are doing great in school and, and uh, Jennifer and I feel very blessed and we're very proud of them. Um, you know, as I come back here, I don't really have much advice. I guess the only real counsel that I would give you is just to um, never lose sight of what an amazing privilege it is to get to serve in this institution and represent the people of Indiana. I know there are times, long nights, and, and there are spirited debates, but to actually be in an institution that follows the rules, that argues on big issues, that then votes, decides, and moves on, it's an, it's an amazing blessing. And uh, every year longer that I'm removed from this place, I grow that much more nostalgic for the time 
that I bid, that, that, I, that I was able to serve here. So when you have those long nights and work those long hours, don't forget to smile. It's a real privilege to be a part of this institution. And I'll leave you just then with one last thought. You know, some of you may have noticed that we're in the midst of a presidential campaign in our country. Uh, um, there are some questions yet to be before us. This week, or over the weekend, we had the tragic passing of Justice Scalia, who is a conservative icon, somebody I'm a huge um, fan of, and of course we'll have big decisions to make there as a country. I did not know Justice Scalia well. I only really had a chance to speak with him at length once. And I can tell you that my lasting memory of him was that this conservative icon, this firebrand was such a gentle man. He was a gentleman, a clear person of faith who treated everybody he met with dignity and respect. A lot of people don't know this. He could write tough opinions, but his best friend in the U.S. Supreme Court was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, not considered one of the more conservative justices, right? And one of my favorite quotes from this eminently quotable man is this, Just, Judge Scalia would say, I attack ideas, I don't attack people. Some very good people can have some really bad ideas. And if you don't understand that, you need to get a different day job. And so as, as we celebrate Justice Scalia's commitment to conservative principles, I hope we can also um, celebrate his commitment to civility. Because frankly, this nation, this state, could use a good dose of both. Thank you all very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Congressman Messer. <laughs> the Senate will reconvene. Uh, Senator Taylor, uh, Senator Taylor recognized for a point of personal privilege. McKaylee, I don't see her. Oh my God, did they take her away? <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, I don't see Kaylee. Oh, that's Kenny. Is she here? Where did she go? Well, I just wanted to say my, my cousin is here today, or at least uh, she is paging and I don't see her. Can the pages tell me if she's back? Anyway, she's paging for Senator Waltz, but I wanted to, uh, actually recognize her for her accomplishments in school. And uh, I just want to say thank you for Michaela. Michaela, thank you for coming today to see me. And uh, uh, I'm just so proud of her as a young, seen her grow up as a young lady. And uh, just wanted to say thank you for coming to see right. Cousin Greg. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Taylor. Um, while we're, before we get to the uh, rest of the agenda, if we could recognize Dr. Robert Dixon from Whiteland, our chiropractor of the day. Can you raise your hand back there? Thank you so much, Dr. Dixon, for joining us. Really appreciate that. Okay, we will continue then with uh, introduction of bills. Clerk will read. Senate File List 19, SR 31, Homeland Security and Transportation, Senator Head, SR 32, Commerce and Technology, Senator Walz. And another uh, file list. Senate File List 20, SC 39, Local Government, Senator Grooms. Okay. Uh, Senator Taylor, would you like to be recognized for, to finish your point of personal privilege? All right. You're recognized. All right, everybody. Here's Michaela. She was out there taking a picture with Senator Waltz, who actually is her senator. And I just wanted to, uh, this is one of my wife's family members, and she is such a beautiful young lady. I've seen her grow up from a little redhead to a young lady now, and I just wanted to say I'm so proud of her. She's done so much uh, with so little. And I think that this is one of the best accomplishments that we can recognize on the floor of the Senate. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Taylor. Um, we have many committee reports, so we are going to jump ahead to special resolutions. Uh, Senator Mishler. Senator Mishler calls Senator, Senate concurrent resolution number 33. Clerk will read. Concurrent resolution, congratulating Steve Oak. Chair recognizes Senator Mishler to speak on the resolution.
Thank you, Madam President, members of the Senate. Uh, in the past few years, uh, Penn Harris Madison School Corporation has had the uh, Teacher of the Year, the Superintendent of the Year, uh, the Educator of the Year, the School Business Manager of the Year. And today, we're here to honor Mr. Steve Hope, the uh, High School Principal of the Year. Uh, Penn always has this motto, if one person wins, we all win. And I quote Dr. Thacker, I'm a still from Dr. Thacker, whether it's athletics, academics, uh, music, whatever it may be, uh, Penn wins 90% of the time. So if you want to win, go to Penn. And I will disclose that my son Grant is a fifth grader in the Penn schools, and Mr. Hope will be his principal in four years. So I am a little biased. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Hope started out as a teacher, an art teacher in 1996. He's advanced to dean of students, director of counseling, assistant principal, associate principal, uh, before becoming principal in 2008. Uh, when he took over in 2008, the graduation rate was 79%. In 2014, that was up to 97% graduation rate. Um, under Mr. Hope's leadership, Penn's been an A-rated school, and he was instrumental in the implementation of the early learning, or the early college academy. Um, I'm proud to be part of the Penn Triangle of Success, parent, teacher, student. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Hope and, and his wife Becky for their sacrifices and dedication to the Penn community. And with him today is Rachel Fry, the principal of the STEM Academy, um, Duke Lines, the associate principal, and our wonderful superintendent, Dr. Jerry Thacker. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Senator Mishler. Is there further discussion? Yes, Senator Zakis, recognize the speaker on the resolution. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Members of the, uh, of the Senate, I also wanted to uh, congratulate Steve on this great uh, award, much deserved. Senator Mishler pointed out 